Hello, today we are going to look into the second uh, network model that is the TCP IP model. In previous video, we have seen the OSI model which is the first network model developed by ISO. The second network model is the TCP IP protocol suit. Now why is it the TCP IP model is called as a protocol suit because TCP IP has a collection of protocols at every layer. That is why we call it as TCP IP protocol suit. Now, how many layers we had in OSI model? We have seven layers in OSI model, whereas in TCP IP model, we will have four layers only. Now, I will show you a comparison between the layers of OSI model and the TCP IP model. Now, you can see the seven layers, physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session, presentation and application. Seven layers of OSI model mapped with four layers of one, two, three, four. Four layers of TCP IP model. Okay. What is the first layer in uh, TCP IP model? The physical layer, the physical layer and the data link layer are combined into a single layer called as the host to network layer. Okay, and the network layer of OSI model is the internet layer of TCP IP model. The transport layer is same as uh, in TCP IP model is same as the OSI model. The session, presentation and application layer of OSI model are combined into a single layer called as application layer. So we have four layers in TCP IP model. We have the uh, host to network layer, network layer, transport layer and application layer. Now let us learn each layer in detail. The first one is the host to network layer. Now in the host to network layer, it is a combination of the physical layer and data link layer. Here what we have is we have a interface between the uh, host and the transmission links. There is no particular protocol being specified. You can see in the host to network layer, there are no particular uh, specific protocols being specified by TCP IP. All the other protocols are supported though, but when you see at the other layers, you can see a collection of protocols at network layer, transport layer and the application layer. That is why it is called as a protocol suit. Okay, so what does the host to network layer provides? It provides an interface between the hosts and the transmission links. Then coming on to the network layer. Now, the network layer of TCP IP model is also called as the internet layer. Now, why is it called so? Because you know, we are talking about internet. So the network layer is called as an internet layer here. Now, in network layer, one very important protocol plays a very important role, which is called as the IP protocol. This is the main protocol of internet layer that is called as the IP protocol. In this IP protocol, before telling you about IP protocol, let me tell you about two uh, uh, types of services that a protocol provides. One is connection oriented service and the other one is connection less service. What is connection oriented service? Connection oriented service means whenever I want to transmit data, I will establish a communication between both the devices. I will use that communication uh, device uh, or I will use that communication channel for transmitting the data and then I will terminate the connection. This is called as connection oriented service. The best example of connection oriented service is talking on a telephone network. Whenever I would like to make a call to somebody, I will pick up the phone, I will dial the number establishing the connection, I will talk transmission of data, I will hang up the phone, release of connection. This is called as connection oriented service. In this service, whatever I speak goes to the receiver and whatever the receiver says is being received by, by me. That means this transmission is reliable, meaning connection oriented service is a reliable communication service. The second type of service is connection less service. What is connection less service? That I do not establish any connection between both the communicating parties. The messages are just sent like that. The best example of connectionless service is the postal system. Whenever I want to post a letter to a particular uh, person, I will just write the address of that person and post it. The, uh, the way, the route through uh, that the letter has to follow is not being decided by me. Okay, so now the letter which I have sent may, uh, two letters I have sent to the same destination. The first may arrive second, the second may arrive first, meaning that in a connection less service, there is no reliability. Now let us come to the IP protocol. The IP protocol is a unreliable connection less protocol. So what service it is providing? It is unreliable and it is connection less. Because it is connection less, it is unreliable service. So what basically the IP protocol does is, it will transport the packet or the data 
of in packets as datagrams. Now, why is the word uh, datagram taken in, in place of a packet? Now, you, if you know that this is connection less service, when it is connection less service, what happens? The data are uh, related to postal system. In postal system, we have the term telegram. So, here we have data is being transmitted. So, in an analogy with the word telegram, we got the word datagram where it means that it is unreliable and connection less. So, an IP protocol is responsible only for transmitting these datagrams. Now, the it provides the IP protocol provides the best effort delivery service. What do you mean by best effort delivery service? The best effort that I can put is to only transmit the datagrams. I will not be providing error control, flow control or routing of these datagrams. The IP does not provide error control nor flow control nor it provides any routing of the datagrams. So, what, how, what is going to happen? The IP will not keep track of any routes that the datagram has to follow nor does it uh, will see that whatever datagrams are being sent are received by the receiver or not that is not guaranteed. So, who has to take care of all this? All these things has to be taken care by the layers above it because I have already told you in OSI model that every layer provides services or takes services from the layer above it. So, the IP protocol can provide only this transmission of datagrams. Now, coming on to if you just go back and see, I told you that the TCP IP is a collection of protocols, protocol suit meaning at network layer or I will call it as an internet layer, there are a collection of protocols, IP we have discussed, then we have some supplementary or additional protocols like ARP, RARP, ICMP and IGMP. Now what are these protocols? See because uh, IP cannot provide all services, hardly it is providing any services, so I have to provide some additional responsibilities to be taken care. So, who will take care of it? The extra protocols which are mentioned will take care of it. What is address resolution, pro uh, address resolution protocol and reverse address resolution protocol? Now, as you all know, every device is identified, every person, device, place is identified by an address. So, likewise, we will have a device address. That device address could be the physical address that is called as a MAC address or it could be the logical address or the IP address or if you want to identify the address of the process on a device that will be a port address. So, these, there are different types of addresses. Now, whenever I have my uh, in address resolution protocol, what this protocol does it, it maps the logical addresses with the physical address. That means, I have my logical address, but I do not have the physical address. Then I will make use of the address resolution protocol. Then we have reverse address resolution protocol where the device is having its physical address, but not having the IP address or logical address. Then I will make use of the reverse address resolution protocol. So, these both are address resolution protocols and then we have internet control message protocol in short we will call it as ICMP. Now, what is this ICMP? Internet control messages that means it is going to provide control messages to the IP protocol saying that the datagram has not been received or there is some communication problem all such reporting error reporting messages are provided by ICMP. Then next what is IGMP? IGMP is internet group message protocol that means I am on internet, on internet I am providing simultaneous messages to a group of recipients meaning I have a, I have a, a lot of messages and I want to provide that to a group of recipients then I will make use of the IGMP protocol. So, now we have studied the second layer of TCP IP model that is network layer which has four protocols. IP the main one and the additional protocols ARP, RARP, ICMP and IGMP. Now, let us move on to the next layer that is the transport layer. As it is being told to you in OSI model, the transport layer is responsible for end to end communication or process to process delivery between the devices. Now, when you want to do process to process delivery, the process to process delivery can be done using three protocols. Either I use TCP, UDP or SCTP. Let us learn each one of the protocol. What is transmission control protocol? As I told you, transmission control protocol is also called as a stream control protocol. What do you mean by a stream? A stream means th that the communication is connection oriented. As I already told you, IP is unreliable connectionless, but whereas when we come to TCP, TCP is reliable connection oriented protocol. So, automatically what all comes in? 
there will be error control because it is reliable, there will be flow control because it is reliable. So whatever duties IP was not performing, TCP protocol will perform, okay. So now, see what a stream means, it is connection oriented. So what actually happens, I will tell you, what a stream, stream of data that has to be transmitted from process A to process B over the network. So what will happen? The stream will be divided into smaller units and those smaller units will be because the stream is a large message. I would like to divide it. When I am dividing it, it will be divided as segments. So now what we, uh, I just to remind you that uh, IP will not provide any uh, ordering or reordering of uh, datagrams. Meaning I have sent datagrams 1, 2, 3, 4, they may arrive as 4, 3, 2, 1. So, uh, IP will not take care of all this. So, who will do this reordering of messages and how they will do the reordering of messages? This can be done using sequence number. So, every segment which I am making, for that I will have a sequence number. So, when I put a sequence number, if they go in any order, when they come to the receiver, what re receiver will do? It will reassemble the segments which were divided depending on the sequence numbers and will reorder them. So, the, uh, the issue of ordering and reordering of messages is solved in TCP protocol because it makes use of segmentation, sequence numbers and reassembly. Okay, then comes acknowledgements. What is acknowledgement? If I have sent a segment to you, you are acknowledging the receipt of that segment to me. What are you doing? You are doing flow control here. Okay, so once you have received, now I can send you more. So all this is taken care by the TCP protocol. Coming on to the second protocol of transport layer that is UDP. What is UDP? Again, the name says user datagram protocol. The term datagram here itself automatically implies that this service is also unreliable and connectionless service. So what best it can do? It will provide port addresses. Now what best a UDP can do is it's unreliable connectionless protocol. Okay. And who will use it? Who do not want TCP sequencing and flow control? If that is not an issue, flow control and uh, uh, sequencing is not an issue, they can use UDP, okay. Now, so what UDP basically does then, it does process to process delivery of a message with their port addresses. I told you every process to be identified should have a port address. So that port addressing part and error control using checksum, using checksum and we will be learning about checksum, error control all in future, okay. So that is done by the UDP. Now, basically where we actually use UDP, you can get a question like this, what is the application of UDP? UDP is basically used where we have a client request type of connection, where I have a request reply protocol, where I would like to have fast answers than uh, prompt answers than accurate answers. Accuracy will get in TCP, but promptness and fastness will get it in UDP protocol. Then what is the third protocol? Third protocol is SCTP. What is SCTP? I will just show you. SCTP is stream control transmission protocol which takes the capabilities of both TCP and UDP and becomes a more stronger protocol which is called as the SCTP. Now let us move on to the application layer. Now you can see session and presentation roles in TCP IP model are very less. So they have been combined into a single layer called as the application layer. Now as I told you what is an application layer? An application layer has a direct connection to the user. So it provides a u interface to the user who is using that particular uh, device. Okay. So what services that the application layer provides? So the application layer provides us with Yes, the application layer is equivalent to combined session, presentation and application layer of the OSI model. Here it contains all high level uh, protocols. What kind of protocols are present here? Telnet protocol which is uh, useful for virtual telecommunication. We have FTP file transfer protocol which is used for large file transfers. Simple mail transfer protocol SMTP which is used for mail services. Domain name system, this is a service used for mapping the host names with their network addresses. And then we have hypertext transfer protocol which is used for fetching web pages on the www that is your internet. And then we have real time transport protocol which is used for transmitting real time data like audio, video and movies. Okay, so this was about your TCP IP model, one of the most used network model. Thank you.